Hello everyone, my name is William Strife, and welcome back to Strife Solutions. Um, behind me is the Crossroads facility. I have returned here after our wonderful exploit uh, last time of getting our hands on another star, uh, you know, going to the nether, getting the wither skulls, summoning, killing the wither, all that wonderful stuff. So, you may ask, why? Why, Will? Why would you need another star? Why would you start uh, by, by collecting another star? Well, it's pretty simple. The whole purpose of what I'm doing right now is trying to rebuild the Solution Tower, and furthermore, the Solution Business Park around it. <clears throat> we will, uh, we'll, we'll focus on just the tower for now, and we're not even going to focus on the tower yet. What we really, what I really have to do is focus on the foundation that the tower is built on. Now, the foundation is a 58 by 58 block platform that's supposed to be roughly 27 blocks tall, okay? So, if you do the math, that roughly comes out to 26 double chests of cobblestone that I'm going to need to build the foundation, because I don't want the foundation to be hollow, I want it to be solid. Um, so, the fastest way to collect all of that is to make a quarry, and a quarry is going to be dug faster if I do it with a beacon, which is why I need the nether star. Now, um, obviously this nether star super valuable and and you know I'm going to I'm going to make the beacon out of it but that's not good enough I need a plan all good uh, all good projects have a plan so naturally I have a book with a list <clears throat> so today's uh, challenge is beacon and quarry I have to get a quarry up and running and I need a beacon in order to actually get that where it needs to go um, so first things first I have to craft a beacon pretty simple uh, but a beacon really isn't worth anything if I don't have a monument underneath it beacons have a very limited range of influence if they don't have a monument to boost their power so to build the maximum sized monument I need 2.6 stacks of the right type of blocks to build it out of, or more specifically, two stacks and 40 additional blocks. Um, I'm also going to need red stained glass because it's possible to tint the uh, the beam or the pillar of light that comes up out of out of the beacon. Uh, there's a larger reason for why I need like an entire stack of red stained glass. I'll get to that later though. But this is what I need to do to actually, you know, just be prepared to build the beacon with the monument underneath it. But that's not even the first part. Like. A quarry is fantastic, but I need a place to put the materials that I dig out of the quarry, so I have to build a warehouse, okay? That's actually the first thing that I'm really going to be building, um, a warehouse. And then I have to establish the quarry, and then I have to lay the monument. Um, the monument itself, the beacon, needs to be at Y level 5, but I'm putting the cart before the horse. This is everything that needs to be done. Uh, the first thing that we have to do, naturally, is to craft the beacon, so let's just do that. Naturally, first things first on this, I need a little bit of glass, followed by some obsidian, and that should be everything I need. Yeah, sure enough, there we go. We got the beacon. All done. Beacon crafted. The easiest part of everything. Oh, <laughs> then again, it's only easy because I did the hard part last time of killing the weather. The, the wither. Anyways, uh, next up, let's go ahead and hop upstairs and grab the necessary uh, blocks that I'm going to need for the monument. Now, the monument that you uh, put a beacon on top of uh, basically has to be crafted out of any type of precious block. Uh, iron, gold, and diamond are obvious uh, options, but what I'm going to use is emerald, mostly because I have so much emerald. Like, the entire purpose of Crossroads here has been to you know, generate wealth, and it is doing just that, and I have more than enough emerald to get this job done. So, um, the other part is iron, gold, and diamond, they have functional purposes. Um, emerald, if you're not trading with it, it doesn't really have a point or a purpose. So, um, that's the reason why I'm using it. Uh, you also cannot use copper, despite its, uh, its frequent use in the world. But, um, that's everything I needed from Crossroads here, and instead of hopping on a horse, and hopping out uh, and, and riding back to Midcrest, the uh, the central town in this uh, on the map, I'm going to use the rail network here. Um, I built this rail network an age ago specifically because it allows me to traverse the map without having to worry about driving myself anywhere. It's There's just something to be said for putting in all of the hard labor of building a rail line, which is no joke, and then just being able to hit a button and it just gets you where you have to go, and you all you have to do is sit back and relax. It's fantastic, I love it. Ah, Midcrest. Once again, I return. 
Oh, oh, hey, look at that. The sun has uh, gone down on me. All right, so uh, first things first, guys, I have to get my hands on the necessary glass to make it all the way. Yep, okay, I have plenty of glass here, and I think I have the red dye. Yeah, I do. Okay, so, um, I think it's only gonna take eight of these roses? No, it's probably only gonna take four. I can't remember what the, what the crafting recipe for this was. So, yeah, sure enough. Okay, so that's all of the red stained glass I needed. I only needed a stack of it. Um, you know, not wasting any time getting all of this done. Go ahead and put the... Now all I have to do is actually build the warehouse, establish the quarry, and lay the monument. Um, but, to do all of that, I'm gonna need materials, because the actual warehouse itself, it's, it's supposed to be about 40 by 20 blocks in size, um, and it's going to predominantly be made out of wood. Uh, plenty of spruce, dark oak, uh, oak logs, I've got the birch predominantly just to craft the, uh, the chests that are going to go inside of it, and, um, also, I'm going to be making the roof out of copper, because copper thus far doesn't really have much of a use. I've been searching for reasons that you would use it. Like, I can't even craft anything useful out of it. Swords, pickaxes, are it's just pointless. Copper is such a soft material. Um, and I've also got some honeycomb here so that I can wax some of the copper so that it doesn't corrode on me. That's another thing. This stuff corrodes. Iron doesn't rust, but for some reason, blo uh, copper, it, it does oxidize. I don't understand the, the rhyme or the reason behind it. Okay, so with all of that said, I'm just going to go ahead and load up, and hop on my horse, and I'm going to get out to the site so I can show you guys the location where I want to build this. It's just to the north. It's halfway between the uh, main spawn town of Midcrest and the next village on the northern road, which is the Nordic Hamlet. So this is going to be a halfway point between locations on the Nether Highway. And what's particularly uh, good about this place is the fact that um, it's not that far away from an old retired mine that I have, so any additional materials that I need in the process of constructing the warehouse, if I've forgotten anything, I can just hop over to an old mine because, you know, I, it was a, a place where I was originally trying to find all of the necessary stone that I would need for various projects in the world. Ah, and here we are. Okay, so, um, as you can see, this is a this is a small retired camp. It's long since served its purpose. It was originally intended as a place to lie down and pass the night during the construction of the main road from um, Midcrest to uh, the Nordic Hamlet, which is much further to the north. Uh, further past the Nordic Hamlet, the next stop along the Nether Highway, uh, and the next stop along this particular highway is uh, Tev's, um, Tev's Manor. But as you can see, uh, this, this road, it just goes straight through this great wide open plains area. We have a couple of small groves of trees on either side, but um, the main reason why I have chosen this location to dig the quarry and subsequently the uh, build the um, warehouse, which, uh, you know, the warehouse just follows the quarry, is the fact that this is a nice wide open area. Uh, the, the reason is actually mul uh, several fold, but um, the wide open area is the first component. I'm not fighting hillsides when trying to dig a quarry. It's not some big um, problematic process. So um, the intention here is that, you know, the, I'm facing north this way. Over here on the, uh, the east side of the road, this is where the quarry is going to go. I'll probably put the middle of it. I'll, I'll probably put the middle of the quarry somewhere uh, back there. Uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, Meanwhile, over here on the west side of the road, this is where the construction or uh, the warehouse is going to be built. So um, this is also a, a secondary component. I really like the idea of having, you know, a big basically industrial hole in the ground on one side of the road and then, you know, having an equally industrious but, you know, not as unsightly of a location, the warehouse being out here. And as you can see, um, I've already laid out uh, in the process of, like, scouting the location. Um, I, you know, whenever I was scouting the locations, and I was like, okay, well, where on earth can I build this place? Um, I looked at this little pond here, and I was like, hey, you know what, That that's, that's really nice. Um, because I'm gonna build the warehouse, right? But I don't know that I'm gonna have all of the necessary space to actually, um, 
I don't know that the, the warehouse is going to be the only thing that I build. I'm, I'm only intending to build a warehouse right now, but you never know. You might end up needing more um, construction. And this being a halfway point between two separate villages, it kind of makes sense for something to be out here, even if it is just a warehouse industrious town. You know, but I'm essentially building a company town right now. Um, but uh, as you can see, I've already set out the spot. The, um, the warehouse itself is 20 blocks wide, and then it goes 40 blocks back. So in other words, the thin side of the uh, the structure is what's going to be facing towards the road, and then it just stretches way, 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 way back. So the idea here is that, um, you know, you got the four blocks there, and then it'll come back up. And what I'm going to need to do is um, I'll probably sh uh, shave off the, the dirt, uh, this, this particular layer of dirt for a good uh, distance, and then... Uh, use that dirt to fill in space right up front here to create a platform. You guys know me. I love my platforms. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to throw down these chests that I have, deposit all of the materials that I've brought out with me, and then I'm going to head back to Midcrest and just transport all of the materials out here to the site so I can get started on building this warehouse because without the warehouse, I won't be able to get to work on the quarry. So first thing was first, I stripped away a whole bunch of dirt from the top of the hillside and used it to fill in the platform so that I would have a nice, wide, even place to build the warehouse on top of. I then came through and started building up the walls with the support struts, but it wasn't long before I realized I needed to blow holes in those walls just to create some amount of variation. I did it with dark oak stairs. And I also flanked the dark oak stairs on the top and bottom with dark oak trap doors just to, just to add a little bit more depth and uh, color variation to the walls. With the walls entirely complete, I went on to the roof, and it wasn't long before I realized I couldn't really build the roof the way that I wanted to. I ended up getting the exact same thing done that I wanted to do from the beginning, but I had to build it in an odd way, because the wide sections of the roof are supposed to be lower than basically these ribs that align with the support struts of the building. But I realized, oh, building the lower section is going to make a lot more sec sense than building the higher section because of just the way that block placement works. Uh, then once I was done with the low section, I put the ribs in with uh, waxed copper so everything will be nice and uh, contrast with time. With the structure complete, I went inside of the facility and started laying down granite and andesite to create a variation of color and texture so I would know exactly where to put all of the chests. And the chests themselves took probably the longest outside of the roof because it just takes a long time to craft and place that many chests whenever you stack them on top of each other. Speaking of which, chests don't really look good when you stack them on top of each other because they're not visually meant to just float like that. So I came around and I added a whole bunch of oak trap doors in an effort to make it look like they're shelves. And the final step was to come around the outside of the building and strip all of the oak logs. It was intended to do this from the very beginning, but I waited until the very end just to get a nice pop and change to the entire build. The main reason is to just create some variation in color from the main wood that the structure is built out of. Okay, guys, we are done. We are entirely finished with this facility. It is complete. Um, it is a testament. It is it is grand. It 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 shows off the capabilities and um, the skill of Strife Solutions to create and build infrastructure and whatnot. Uh, it, it is admittedly not the largest structure I've ever built, but um, it it works. Okay, it works, and it's it's phenomenal. This facility holds a whopping 336 double chests. Okay, so if you do the math, that's more than 18 thousand inventory slots, which translates to, you know, 1.1 million blocks individually, okay? So, you can you can hold more than 1.1 million blocks in this facility if every single inventory slot was a full stack. So, this is substantial. This place is uh, a a absolutely amazing. Um, I've gone ahead and I've put in a little gate here. I didn't want to have a... Uh, I didn't want to have a piddly little door, not even a double door. It's too small for this. It's a warehouse. I, I kind of like the idea of having a roller door. Um, so I've put a little bit of, I put some andesite stairs up there to make it look a little bit more like we have a shutter going on. Um, also, the roof is gonna, the roof is gonna change. It's gonna age gracefully. Uh, these, these in-between points between the, uh, the support pillars, these ribs across the top, they are waxed copper. But these in-between points, these are the, uh, <clears throat> these are you know, just unwaxed, un, uh, un, unmanaged copper, they are going to weather, they're going to turn green and get patina on them. 
pretty sure that's how it's said, patina. And they, they'll look fantastic as time goes on. Oh yeah, we got a little bit of weathering going on already. So, um, this place has, like, it's, it's perfect. So, anyway, huge, huge facility. I have, like, step one is done. Step one, which admittedly took forever. Step one took an absolute freaking age to actually uh, complete. But we are now finished with the warehouse. So... It's time to get to work on the quarry. The quarry is really the big, big component, and um, most of the construction here I've done it without wearing my equipment, but I'm gonna go ahead and put the, all of that on because of what I'm about to get up to here. Um, now it's time to dig the quarry, and the quarry, I've done some uh, I've done some measuring. The quarry um, with, well, the beacon. Whenever the beacon is at, at its maximum range of influence, it's going to be 101 by 101 block area. So I've done some measuring and to, to be far enough away from the road, this little area just past this pond is, is just good enough. So, I think what we'll do is... We'll dig it right here. We'll dig it right here. What I'm gonna do here is uh, I'm going to play a dangerous game, and I'm gonna dig myself down to a height of roughly five. Essentially, once I hit deep slate, I know that I've gone far enough down. Because, again, like, my goal here is not to actually collect up deep slate. My goal is to collect up as much uh, stone as possible. So we don't want to dig the monument too far down. Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put a torch on... I'm gonna put torches on my left so that I don't accidentally... Uh, so I don't accidentally, like put the beacon down in the wrong spot. Now, um, hopefully I don't run into any lava, and, oh, you know what, actually, since I'm here, I'll go ahead, and I'll check this. Yeah, I've still got some fire-resistant potions from last time, so I've, I've, I'm prepared. I'm prepared if something should go wrong. So let's just, let's just continue to mine, and let's hope that I don't hit anything on the way down. All right, here we go. I found level five. So where my feet are standing is literally where the uh, the monument, uh, the beacon needs to rest. So um, now begins the long, well, not necessarily, it, it's not gonna be all that long. The, the relatively arduous process of digging out around this entire uh, area. So from this, this hunk of cobblestone, actually, you know what I'll do? Instead of using cobblestone, I, I brought this emerald with me. I'm going to use it anyway. This is the center block, okay? This is this is where the monument has to be on top of. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig out. It's got to be four blocks in every single direction. Oh, gravel. Alrighty then. There we go. That is... Oh, I, I came with just barely enough material to actually get this job done. Okay, so before I uh, before I actually get myself out of this little chamber here, guys, what I need to do <clears throat> is uh, I need to get myself a little bit more cobblestone. Okay, that's that that should be more than enough. Thank I mean, oh, I'm so thankful that I have these uh, these shulker boxes on me. Okay, so first things first, um, where, how do we get out of here? Oh, that's nice. It's it's nighttime outside. That means that uh, I could totally run into a creeper on my way up. Or they could, you know, just fall down the hole. Blow up my uh, my beacon, that would be fantastic. Okay, so, put the beacon down. It is completely inactive. We have all four layers. One, two, three, four. Uh, oh no, it's active. I don't think it's actually doing anything right now though, so. Um, let's go ahead and activate this bad boy. What do we want? What do we want? Let's do haste and haste two. Because this is a quarry, we want to be able to mine super, super fast, and we'll go ahead and feed it an ingot, and... Boom! It should be working. Yep, there you go, haste two. How fast does this thing work? I haven't I haven't done this in a while. Oh wow, that, that is very fast. Okay, so that, that's, exa <laughs> that's exactly what I was going for. Okay, so, that's finished, guys. We have the beacon. It is up and running. Now, my next task is to take this red glass, this red stained glass that I have here, Oops. And okay, so I'm I'm in the beacon. God knows um, what uh, what this is doing to my cell structure, you know, by by having that done. But what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to tower out of the entire uh, of this hole slowly, laying um, laying this. What the hell, strange. Uh, anyway, I'm going to tower out of the hole here, continuously laying 
red stained glass because I don't want to accidentally. I don't want any. I don't want anyone accidentally falling out of this hole, uh, falling down the hole into the beacon in the process of uh, of digging the quarry. You know, so that's the reason why I'm laying all of this uh, red stained glass. Hopefully, I've got enough of it. I mean, I don't think that I got. I don't think I got an entire stack of cobblestone in the process of getting down here. All right, there we go. I've come out the top. The quarry is ready to go, guys. I'm not going to be bothering to uh, fix it up or, or work it or anything today because that's it. That's the end of this entire uh, this entire endeavor for now. What I'm going to and, and of course, you know, you, you think I'm going to dig the quarry? Absolutely not. I will not be. I am not here to get my hands dirty on such a large grunt work type of project. I am here to manage. I am here to plan, etc. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to like. This, this is where I stop. I'm going to get some workers in here to actually fix things up. So, um, let me go ahead and get my armor off. Let's go ahead and take a look at our checklist here. What have we got? Craft a beacon. Oh my word. I should have, I should have been picking this thing up, uh, the whole time. Uh, grab the mania blocks, make the red stained glass, build the warehouse. Totally finish that. I have established the quarry and I've laid the monument. So that's it, guys. That's done. Beacon and quarry are completed. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I will get some workers in here and we will continue to work, uh, super, super hard on getting that quarry uh, together. And then we will move on to our tasks for next time, which won't be long. I'll see you all then. Take care. Bye.